if anyone makes a cow song, they have to say got milk. I think I was forced to say that shit subconsciously. Because I like animals, but I also eat them. Um, so I'm kind of conflicted. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. This is the Progressive West, and my name is Solomon. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the new series I'm starting on my channel called Casual Carnism. Um, carnism is a term that is commonly used and understood in vegan circles, uh, but it's not commonly understood or used um, by the majority population, uh, those being meat eaters and some vegetarians. Um, and so the purpose of this video and uh, the videos in the series um, is to create awareness for carnism, uh, this ideology, and really for me to vent some frustration, <laughs> some shared frustration I think I share with the uh, vegans out there that, that see this ideology being played out in our everyday lives, in the media that we consume, uh, in, in just in general. So for those uninitiated, uh, the term carnism was coined by Dr. Melanie Joy. She's a vegan activist, a social psychologist, and author. And I believe it was in her book titled Why We Love Dogs, Eat Pigs, and Wear Cows, an introduction to carnism, where carnism was first coined and used and defined. Um, so I'm going to give it over to her in just a second so that she can describe it in a little bit better detail than me. Uh, but I also just want to say a little caveat that to the vegans out there that um, we should be coming from a place of compassion, right, uh, in our activism. And so usually calling carn people carnists uh, straight out the box, probably not a great idea just because like I said, most people don't know what this term means. They don't um, understand what you're talking about. So I think it can be a little bit overused. I think it's fine to use uh, among vegans. Like we, we understand what it means and we can use it and communicate effectively. But to the non-vegans out there, um, using this term, it's not effective communication if we don't do a little bit of education first. It's not a communication effect. Yeah, okay. And... So just dismantle some of the basics first, I'd say, is, uh, you know, we don't need to eat meat to survive. You know, most, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, so I think we can do a little bit of education first, and then we can start introducing some of these more complex terms or, or new terms to people like harnism, speciesism, and things like that. I think those, these are very important to point out and talk about and educate people on, uh, of course, So which is why I'm talking about it. So with all that being said, let's uh, pass it over to Dr. Joy. And uh, we'll be right back to talk about the casual carnism of Doja Cat. When I stopped eating animals, I had a paradigm shift. In other words, I didn't see different things. I saw the same things differently. Beef stew seemed no different than golden retriever stew. And everywhere I turned, I saw people putting the bodies of dead animals into their mouths as though nothing at all were wrong. So I became very curious as to how rational, caring people, like myself, could just stop thinking and feeling. Well, two advanced degrees later, I had my answer. And this is what I discovered. There is an invisible belief system or ideology that conditions us to eat certain animals. And I named this system carnism. We tend to assume that only vegans and vegetarians follow a belief system, but when eating animals is not a necessity, which is the case in much of the world today, then it is a choice, and choices always stem from beliefs. Now, carnism is a dominant ideology, meaning that it's so widespread, its doctrine is seen as a given rather than a choice. Eating animals is just the way things are. And it is a violent ideology. Meat cannot be procured without violence. And egg and dairy production cause extensive harm to animals. Ideologies such as carnism run counter to core human values. Values such as compassion, justice, and authenticity. And so they need to use defense mechanisms that distort our thoughts and numb our feelings so that we act against our values without fully realizing what we are doing. 
Okay, so the main takeaways of that are carnism is a dominant ideology, meaning almost everybody accepts it as a given. Two, it's nearly invisible because of that dominance. Three, it's a violent ideology uh, that perpetuates violence against the victims. Um, and also fourth, that it is an oppressive ideology where the victims of that oppression are most commonly non-human animals. And it should be said and noted here that while vegans have learned, unlearned uh, this ideology and they've come out of this ideology and sort of seen the light, so to speak, uh, we all are mired in several systems of oppression all at once. And this is something that Dr. Joy talks about with Earthling Ed on his podcast, The Disclosure Podcast, which I highly recommend you watch. Um, and there's a link in the doobly-doo down below. <laughs> and also I would recommend go and watch that whole um, the whole video, uh, the whole TED Talk uh, from Dr. Joy, because it's really worth the watch, and it's really insightful and important, I think. So uh, that is uh, just what I want to say about that. Now let's actually talk about the casual carnism of Doja Cat, which you all came here for. Bitch, I'm a cow, Stop it. Get some help. So many of you have probably already heard of Doja Cat and of maybe you've already heard of this song. I assume you've heard it since you're watching this video, the song called Moo by Doja Cat, uh, where she pretends to be uh, or sings from the perspective of a cow uh, and uh, talks about various animal products and things uh, of that nature. Yeah, it's a very silly song and it and basically went viral before that reason that it's a very, it's just a very funny, silly song, um, but it's seemingly you know is well produced and catchy um so that is the main thing i'll be breaking down um but actually i'll be mainly breaking down her interview that she did with genius breaking down her lyrics and then telling some uh, of the meaning behind it let me just say first thing that yes i'm having a little bit of fun with this but i'm not trying to throw hate at anybody that i'm uh analyzing with this casual carnism series i just want to point out the carnism uh that's being displayed by these people usually unintentionally um and just as far as doja cat goes i actually do kind of like the song i think that there's something clever about uh creating a song from the perspective of a cow um but the problem is that she just goes completely the wrong direction about uh, the whole thing so instead of making a song about a funny song about hey I'm a cow like look at me I'm in a fall I'm in a barn you know like and then having maybe a dark twist to it like oh shit I'm going to a slaughterhouse it kind of just brushes that kind of stuff off and it's like hey don't you like cheese steak and don't you like uh, ice cream and don't you like milkshakes and and chili and, and and like uh you know all this kind of animal products that she basically makes a free commercial for um so this fits really nicely into the definition of, of casual carnism specifically because uh, this song was not even thought out very much at all. She says herself that this was sort of a spur of the moment thing that she just came up with on the spot. I've totally thought that shit that I've made would go viral, but that wasn't really the idea behind this. I was just like fucking around. I made the song and the video in one day. I was sweaty as fuck. It was gross. It was, I was just in bed, wig off, makeup on, just covered in grease. So clearly Doja didn't intend to make any uh, statements about cardism or veganism here, but she does have a moment of self-awareness uh, that where she realizes that she has done a bit of free propaganda work for the meat, dairy, and egg industries when she says that she just unconsciously or subliminally maybe slipped in the phrase got milk into the song because of course you know you're making it a song about about the dairy and, and meat industry so you, you gotta throw in that word where of course uh just or got milk uh was a propaganda campaign um done by the dairy industry the meat and dairy industry since they're one and the same uh to get people to drink more milk often by promoting uh, celebrities drinking milk and getting that you know famous mustache and promoting this myth that adult human beings need the um, milk of a cow meant for a baby cow to 
get calcium and have strong bones. Where of course you can get plenty of calcium on a plant-based diet um, and you're going to not get hormones or an antibiotics uh, and you're not going to be killing any um, innocent cows, uh, that being the dairy cow or the, the male calves. Um, and you're not going to be subjecting female cows to sexual exploitation for their entire lives. Um, so that's something that the Just Milk campaign is not going to tell you, of course, but it's something that um, Doja Cat uh, has internalized because of years of living in this culture uh, and then uh, putting it out there for, for her massive audience to see. If anyone makes a cow song, they have to say God Milk. I think I was forced to say that shit subconsciously. Doja then goes on to actually make a point about uh, the meat industry and how it relates to the environment, um, which is interesting uh, because it actually confirms something that I found to be true about the ideology of carnism, which is that it is only acceptable to challenge the ideology of eating meat as long as it pertains to the environment. And if it helps the environment, then it's perfectly acceptable to uh, stop eating meat and to um, ask other people to stop eating meat that she actually does do in this video, uh, where she says, don't do what I do, it's bad for the environment, um, when she comments about methane emissions. Uh, here, she misunderstands how methane is harming the environment, uh, citing the ozone, where, of course, the ozone was caused by CFCs, uh, and not by methane or carbon, but carbon dioxide. Methane is a problem because the the animal agricultural industries are uh, fueling, helping fuel the climate crisis in a very major way. Um, but you know, she doesn't obviously know a lot about that kind of stuff, which is you know I guess fine. But uh, I just find it interesting that it's one of those beliefs where even though she doesn't know much about the environmental movement or about veganism. Uh, that's a belief that seems to have stuck in her head subconsciously as well. That it's okay to question meat eating as long as it's about the environment. But as soon as it's about ethics and about uh, the animal's well-being and their desire to live, then you get hostility uh, thrown back and the defensiveness of the carnism, uh, the carnistic ideology coming to, to bite you in the ass. You a calf, bitch. You my daughter. I ain't bothered. Get slaughtered. Got the methane. I'm a father. It's kind of political and shit. You know, I got a little political in it. Appa allegedly, cows are farting right now and they are ruining the ozone. This is not helping and I, me eating this, don't do what I'm doing. And here I actually agree with Doja Cat. If you want to save the environment, one of the, the best thing you can do as an individual to reduce your impact on the climate and on the environment, um, is to stop eating animal products altogether. Do not eat meat, do not eat dairy, or do not eat eggs. And let me just quickly discuss why the environment even matters in the first place. It, it matters for human health, clearly, human animals, and our suffering. But that's pretty much not the, o that's not the only thing that people care about when they talk about the environment. Because uh, remember, when we're talking about the ideology of carnism, there's only a select few animals that we really, uh, most people don't care about at all. And we're fine with slaughtering and, and murdering in a mass scale. Um, whereas other species of animals, we, we simply adore. We, we love orangutans, or, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. And, and we love, you know, all these wild animals in rainforests, and we love watching day, uh, nature documentaries, and we, we were distressed when we see them suffering. So when we talk about the environmental movement, people in the environmental movement are very concerned about the suffering of non-human animals in outside wild environments rather than inside uh, of factory farms, which is part of this ideology that conditions us to care about some animals, the animals that live in the wild, whereas the many, many, many more animals that we have contained within our factory farms, uh, they don't get any moral consideration from us or from Doja Cat here. Uh, but I agree with her. Don't do what she does. Don't spread carnism and don't eat meat. I don't hate vegans. I just don't give a fuck that you're vegan. Stop shoving it down my fucking throat. I don't care. Great what you're doing. Thank you for helping the cows and the stuff and the ants and the fucking fruit flies and shit. That's great. Do that and I'm really happy for you. Keep doing it. 
and there's that hostility that I was talking about. So here, Doja Cat acknowledges the work that vegan activists, uh, animal rights activists, are doing, and the fact that they're abstaining from these industries and these these cruel practices uh, is a good thing. But and she actually applauds vegans for for doing this and says, "I don't hate vegans, but hey, but hey, don't shove it down my throat." Um, and that is where this. Uh, concept of carnism becomes very important. It's because that's the normal perceived um, framing of veganism is that vegans are the ones that are pushing an ideology. They're the only ones pushing an ideology in, the, in an extremist set of ideas. Uh, whereas Doja Cat is doing the same thing, but she's just pushing the set of ideas that are already accepted by society. Uh, and she's pushing false beliefs uh, on to vegans. Uh, and funnily enough, this is that same sentiment that so many vegans are familiar with that, hey, why can't you just live and let live? I don't care if you're vegan, just don't tell me to be vegan. Um, well, that's the thing is we do care if you're not vegan and that's because of the victims involved. The, the victims of your non-veganism um, had to bleed and die and choke to death on their own blood and be chopped up in a million pieces for you to sit there and eat their flesh right in front of us while you tell us to live and let live. You see the irony. Live and let live, except I'm going to eat this flesh burger right here. Doja, you can eat a plant-based burger. It'll be just as good and delicious. We like the taste of meat too. Us vegans, we, we liked enjoyed the taste, but we didn't give up uh, meat because we thought it tasted bad um, <laughs> or we wanted to stop. is because we unlearned this uh, carnistic conditioning down my fucking throat i don't care great what you're doing thank you for helping the cows and the stuff and the ants and the fucking fruit flies and shit that's great do that and i'm really happy for you keep doing it because i like animals but i also eat them um so i'm kind of conflicted and that sort of just says it all doesn't it so doja cat's clearly displaying a hallmark of this ideology which is um, that she clearly like loves animals or likes animals uh, and cares about their suffering and even agrees with vegans uh, but is having a hard time reconciling that with her lifestyle um, and she said it herself I am a little bit conflicted I like animals but I eat them uh, and it's a famous saying among vegans that you can't love animals and eat them uh, which is true and false at the same time. Whereas you can't truly live consistently with loving animals if you're, cause, if you're paying for them to be abused, which is what we usually mean when we say you can't love animals and eat them. It, it means you can't be consistently loving animals and morally consistent uh, when, you're, when you say you love animals and you eat them. But it's actually also true that um, people that are victimized by this ideology that have grown up in this ideology, including myself, love animals. They're animal lovers. They will love their dogs and their cats and all sorts of animals, uh, but can't seem to make the connection between the animals that they care about and the animals that they've been conditioned um, to, to essentially hate uh, or essentially feel nothing towards, um, have no moral consideration for. So, uh, that basically sums up carnism <laughs> in a nutshell. If, it, if anything does, uh, that, that video does it. So that's why I wanted to start casual carnism off with that video. So if you liked the video, um, please just hit the like, let me know in the comments, hit the subscribe button, all that stuff. I uh, highly doubt Doja Cat will ever see this video. But hey, if anyone's seeing this video at all, tweet it at Doja Cat or something, uh, maybe she'll see it. And I'd love to see her come to the vegan side. Um, maybe come to her senses a little bit, unlearn this carnism with us, um, and she could be a vital, um, a vital asset to the movement if she decided to. Uh, so that's all for me. This is the Progressive West signing off.